So, recall so if a, x is a topological space and f is a sheaf on x. In fact, for pre sheaf also you can define. So, I want to define what is called stock of f at p, stock at p. Have you seen this definition stock of a, uh, a germ of a function in complex analysis? A differential analysis, a differential geometry or differential topology. So, it is very similar to that. <coughs> so, so, you, so P is a point in X. Hmm. So, by definition, I will explain what is this. So, this is the direct limit of a u. So, this is a sheaf of abelian groups, okay. It should have some structure. In. So, p belongs to u. Right. So, when you see, so what is the, this mean direct limit? So, this is direct limit means you have a directed system. So, directed system means, so if you, if you, you know that since it is a sheaf, if u is a, uh, u contains v, there is a, a natural map f u to f v. Now, if, if you have a uh, open subset p, a v containing p, and u is a open subset containing v, so u contains p. So, this, so then this forms a uh, directed system, right? Whenever you have, so the collection is set of all open subsets containing p. And the directed system, if there is a map from f u to f v whenever v is inside p, v, so if whenever v is inside u, and both con and v contains p. So, this forms a directed system. Now, you take the direct limit. Now, this is this is sheaf of abelian group. So, this will be abelian group. What is the directed system of sets? Huh? Collection of? Okay, for uh, yeah, direct system, forget your structure, direct system of sets is some x alpha, some, some, partial, some partially ordered set is there, right? Alpha belongs to lambda. So, whenever alpha is less than equal to beta or alpha, so you have a map from x alpha to x beta, something like this. And if alpha beta is there, then there is a gamma such that alpha is less than equal to gamma and beta is less than equal to gamma, something like that, right? So, you take uh, the, direct, the partial order that e, u is less than equal to v if u contains v. Yeah. And if you have two things u1 and u2, then take the intersection. And both contain p, so both intersection will also contain p. So, u1 will continue u1 intersection u2, u2 will also continue. This will form a diet system and take that. <coughs> so, now you see that that universal property will tell you that Whenever see if you have a sheaf map, say f to g, suppose f and g are sheaf of abelian groups. So that means for each f u to g u there is a map. And of course, for every because because see okay, before going to the morphism part, I should say this that see you have a natural map. So so you think uh, so what is the element of f p? So, if p uh, element is like a u and uh, f, where f belongs to f u. <coughs> I 
and with a equivalence relation. Equivalence relation is that if you take u u f is equivalent to say u prime f prime, if there exists some v which is in u intersection u prime, and of course p belongs to v because we, uh, p is in u, p is in u prime, such that f restricted to v is same as f prime restricted to v. Right. This is the geometric realization of the stock. So, it is a equivalence class, right? You it is not just a function at a point, but locally defined. But now, two functions may be same if, if they are if you have a further restriction, they are same. So, this is a geometric realization of stock. Okay. Now, now, if you have a morphism say f to g, if you have a morphism of sheaves, hmm, now that means what? That means for every f u to g u there is a map, right? And there is a natural map from f u to f p. So, basically here you, you, you send f to u comma f, the equivalence class. Right, if you for every open subset U containing P, of course, if P is inside U, if P does not, <coughs> so, so there is a natural map. So, so what I am saying this uh, if you have a sheaf homomorphism, the universal property will tell you there is a so there is a map from F U to. Uh, this will say that there is a natural map from f p to g p. Okay. So, I will leave it as a exercise. So, if you have a map of sheaves say f, uh, let us not call f. So, let us call alpha. Then, then this naturally canonically defines a map of map at the stop f p to g p. Oh, this follows from definition. In universal property, you have to use universal property of direct limit. Yeah, because See, G u to G p there is a natural map, then F u to G p for every p belongs to u there is a map, right. So, now the universal property will say that this will factor through F p to G p, that is a that is how you get this map alpha p, ok. So, now this, so this is, now the point is that. <coughs> So, homomorphism of sheaves or pre sheaves gives homomorphism of. So, these are sheaves of abelian groups. So, homomorphism of uh, stocks. So, now so, but yeah. So, before that I should talk about what is called sheafification. This is this is one part another is the sheafification of a See, when we see, I will tell you one uh, reason why you, you need sheafification because you see, in the in the abelian group or in the group theory case, whenever you have an image of a group, that is a group, right. But image of an ideal is not an ideal. So, you have to make it an ideal. So, similarly, here image of a sheaf. Sheaf has some extra condition that blueing condition. The image of a sheaf need not be a sheaf. You need to sheafify. But the uh, good point is that whenever you have a pre-sheaf, that means it's not a sheaf. Image of a sheaf always a pre-sheaf. That's not a problem. But whenever you have a pre-sheaf, you can sheafify it. So there is a called sheafification, and that's it. That is a, some way canonical. That means, whenever and it is also universal in the sense that whenever you have a pre-shift AF, 
you have a it has a simplification you call it f plus and it has this universal property that whenever you have a map from f to g where g is some shift the target is a shift then there is a uh, unique map from f plus to g so what i am saying that suppose f is a pre shift So then there exists a canonical uh, shift f plus containing f. So what does it mean that f plus is a shift and for every open set u f plus f u is contained in f u f plus u. But the point is that this f plus is a shift. Such that it has this universal property. What is the universal property? That whenever you have some map from say f a, f u to g u, or whenever you have let's write f to g. Whenever you have a map of shift, but the right hand side is a shift. This f to f plus, so call this uh, canonical map. So f is a subshift of f plus. So I call this map theta. So it is a subshift. So I have not defined what is a subshift. Subshift is basically definition is that for every open set u, f u is a sub of uh, f plus u, hmm. and which uh, satisfies the obvious restriction maps. So so this is called theta, and there is a unique map. Say if you have if you call this map f to g g so call it g tilde it is like very very much like a tensor product right i mean whenever you have a bilinear map from some a cross b to c then you have a map from a tensor b so this has this f plus so this is this this guy called called the shiftification of f so so if it is like that. If it is a, if it is not a shift, you can make it a shift, and this is called shiftification. So this f plus is called shiftification. Okay. So now the point is that why it should exist. Huh? So you can construct this shift f plus from f. So I am not going to the detail of this. So I leave it for you. Look at any book in uh, shift theory, shiftification. So reference I give any book uh, you, but I need this shiftification. Otherwise I cannot do anything. Hmm. Reference. Look at any book. Uh, you can look at Hartshorn or any book uh, like Kashiwara or. Uh, Sheaves on manifold. I think he has a book on sheaves on and manifold. Uh, many book, many book on homological algebra or uh, sheaf theory. You can find this uh, reference. The shiftification of a pre sheaf. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, <coughs> so so the point is that so so this is the remark. If phi is a map, suppose f and g are two sheaves, f g a sheaf on x, sheaf of abelian group. And if you have a morphism, then you can define what is called kernel of phi. So what is it? You takes u to kernel of phi u. Point is that this kernel of phi is always a sheaf. Is a subsheaf. Or in particular, kernel phi is a sheaf. Hmm. But image of phi, if you define image of phi, u going to phi of u, which is sub of g of u, this is a abelian group, that is fine. But shift can shift to, to, to be a sheaf, you need some extra condition that glowing condition that may not be true. 
one can give examples that it is not always true. Uh, but one can shiftify this. This is always a pre shift. P phi u is always a pre shift. The image of phi is a pre shift. It's a pre shift. And if you shiftify it, so one can shiftify it and call it image of phi because it is canonical. The canonically one can shiftify it. And that you call it image of phi. Again, you denote by image of phi. Because whenever we do uh, shift theory, it is always good to have this uh, shift property. I mean, pre shifts are not good to work with. You need some con some structure, some conditions. So you always shiftify. So and that you call it image of phi. Abuse of notation. Okay. Pre shift, but one can shiftify it. And call it uh, call it image of phi again. This is by abuse of notation. We will see in many situations whenever you don't have any in general it may not be a shift, but you make it a shift. You may do this shiftification process and you and denote the same use the same notation. So this is quite uh, common in. Uh, Mm, LGB geometry. Okay. Okay. So now the point is that this is a proposition which is very important proposition that whenever you have a map phi f to g, hmm, a morphism of sheaf, hmm, morphism of sheaves, then this is injective. Phi is injective. That means the kernel of phi is zero. What does it mean? Kernel of phi is zero means for every u, phi of u is zero. That means phi u is injective. So this is same as say. So this will be this is same as saying that phi p for every point p in x, you have the stock map. Phi p, which is from f p to g p, is injective for all p belongs to x. So now that this is one, and the second one, when phi you call it surjective. So, what is surjective means you take the image of phi and do the shiftification of image of phi that becomes g that is isomorphic to g that is the phi this is this is this is surjective. So, that means you take the phi, phi of f image of f and do the shiftification phi of f need not be a shift but do the shiftification. So, shiftification of image becomes G. So, this is surjective if and only if phi p So, this is true for only for germ. I mean, it is not when you localize at the point or when you take the stock. Not that the, I am not saying that phi is subjective, phi u is subjective for all u. No. That is true for the kernel. That phi u is injective is same as saying that phi p is injective. But for the subjective case, you will see say you will see that uh, there are open subsets where phi u, u phi u is not subjective. But phi p is surjective. Local, if I take locally, it is surjective, but globally, it need not be surjective. Right. <clears throat> so, this is a very important uh, point. I mean, again, I proof is uh, proof again, I will just keep it because I use these things. 
So, again you can look at any book in uh, shift theory for example, hard shown or any other book, any book on shift theory. Okay. So, for example, you uh, you have a C one you have C one thing right the sheaf of abelian groups, which is not a uh, the pre sheaf of abelian groups. For every open subset, you take consider the uh, associate a group abelian group, and all morphisms are identity. That's not a sheaf. That's a pre sheaf. If you sheafify it, what will you get? What will you, you will get the sheaf of locally constant functions on U. So, locally constant means for every point P in X, you have an open set where it is constant. You understand? This is, this is, so if, if X is any topological space, you can define what is called sheaf of uh, locally constant. Suppose A is an abelian group. Chief of locally constant functions on uh, takes which takes values okay. so that means what that for every so so locally that means if you take a suppose something is irreducible open subset, then f of u will be just constant, because locally constant means every point you have this a uh, neighborhood where the s restricted to that neighborhood it is constant, but it is irreducible, and it will be covered by these small small open subsets and they will intersect. So, they are constant. So, on every irreducible closed subs, uh, open subset, it is constant, but there the problem was that you took two disjoint open subsets. So, if you take two disjoint subset, then it will be A direct some A. If it, if it is two disjoint irreducible subset, then it will be A direct some A, not A. There you took A. So, shiftification, so this is the difference with the, but this is the shiftification of that pre shift. Is it clear or? Okay, so this is a, this is what shiftification does. Make the cons their constant function makes it here. You make it a locally constant function. Okay, so now another thing is that this this so this shift of locally constant function this, this forms a shift. You can check that they check this is a shift. So I mean by definition that you say that f is a f of uh, so, if I call if I call this shift by a, so a x, so a x of u uh, locally constant maps on u, on u which takes value. Mm. So, that means the any so elements are like a s from u to a so such that for every p belongs to u, there exists a small neighborhood u p which is a open subset of u uh, such that if you restrict a s to u p, this is constant and this is a sheaf, this is called sheaf of locally constant. This this appears again and again. So, con constant uh, sheaf sometimes is not a good, uh, uh, sometimes it is not a good uh, example. So, you have to take locally constant because that, uh, that because that forms a sheaf. <coughs> and this AX is the sheafification of the sheaf which I defined before, the pre sheaf which I defined before. 